How's it going everybody? My name is Garrett Fletcher. I am the Program Development Specialist here at Grand Canyon University for the College of Engineering. Um, currently, I'm standing right inside of our engineering facility. It's a near 175,000 square feet that was finished towards the tail end of 2016. Um, hopefully all of you uh, that are joining today are interested in becoming an engineer. That's the whole premise um, of our wonderful live stream today. Uh, but in all of that, I kind of want to give you a little bit of a showcase of our engineering facilities and talk about our capstone projects because today is our capstone showcase. Um, so in that, currently right now, I am standing in our 3D printing lab. Uh, within the College of Science, Engineering, and Technology, we have over 40 3D printers. Um, so in that, there's a lot to work with in here. Um, you can see quite a bit of projects are going on right now. Uh, but in all of that, if you have the will to learn, to design, to kind of get kind of artsy uh, with some 3D printing, you're more than welcome to come on in this facility and start to work. Um, in that, here at GCU, we have seven engineering programs, okay? Uh, we have engineering, engineering with an emphasis in robotics, mechanical engineering, mechanical engineering technology, electrical engineering, electrical engineering technology, and biomedical engineering. Um, out of all those programs, those are all undergraduate, so Bachelor of Science. Um, in that, if you've ever heard of something called ABET, it's called the Accreditation Board of Engineering and Technology. Well, here at GCU, uh, we do have some ABET accredited programs. Um, within our engineering facility here, uh, we have engineering that is ABET accredited, engineering with an emphasis in robotics, mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, and biomedical engineering that are all currently ABET accredited. So what is ABET? ABET is the industry standard. Um, in all of that, um, if you have an industry um, that is looking to hire you post-graduation, um, ABET is the industry standard. Um, so companies are very attractive and more likening um, to hire you with that ABET accreditation. So in all of that, um, we'll go ahead and keep walking. Um, within our facility, we're only gonna show you through our first floor. Uh, this facility is pretty big. Again, a near 175,000 square feet. Um, go ahead and hold that door, wonderful. Um, so in that, you can kind of look right now. Um, over here. Uh, we will get to our capstone project shortly. Um, but in all of that, we're gonna keep walking and talking. So. Something interesting um, here at GCU is that we do not have a secondary application. So once you apply once um, to the university, you do get accepted into the university, um, you are in the running uh, to become an engineer. Um, so in that, just know we do not have a secondary form of application. Um, something unique here, um, you can kind of notice over here, are capstone projects. So what a capstone project is, is essentially it's encapsulating your entire experience um, as an engineer. So within these facilities today, what we're gonna be going through is showcasing all of our engineers' hard works. Something we focus on here at GCU is collaboration. So instead of you just being with a mechanical engineer, with an electrical engineer, or just a biomedical engineer, everyone is gonna be working alongside of each other. So instead of competition, we focus on collaboration. Um, so in that, as we continue going, something I want to talk about is our A Center, the Academic Career and Excellence Center. So if you are needing assistance, especially as an engineer here at GCU, you can get that. Uh, whether that's through um, programmatic assistance, um, through free resources like tutoring. Um, we do have free tutoring here at GCU. Um, the Academic Career and Excellence Center, they also work with resume building, um, career workshops, and all of those wonderful things for our engineering students to get further assistance. Uh, they also have something called Career Connections, which if our engineers are interested in getting an internship outside of graduation, maybe during their programmatic experience, um, they can receive that there as well. Um, so as we continue walking um, in this facility, we're now gonna be entering into our workshop area. Excuse me, sorry about that. Uh, we're gonna be entering into our workshop area, but as you can see, as we kind of pan, um, we can see more of our capstone projects that are at work. It's really, really neat. Um, so in that, um, these seniors have worked really hard on their projects. Um, again, um, whether they're electrical, <laughs> biomedical, mechanical, um, they pieced all these together. Um, something I do want to point out uh, within engineering is this monitor right here. Um, so um, getting involved at GCU is very, very important. So join a club, right? So this club in particular, this is Stellar. This is one of our aerospace specific clubs here on campus. We have several, whether that's our Society of Automotive Engineers, known as Canyon Motorsports, Society of Women Engineers, maybe that's our Biomedical Engineering Society, our Mechanical Engineering Society, um, or IEEE. 
and e Institute of Electrical Electronics Engineers, etc. There is a vast majority that you can learn from and get involved here at TCU. Um, as we peek in, we can peek into one of our labs right here. Um, this is one of our mechanical material labs. Um, so in this facility, understanding uh, what goes on uh, with testing materials. So maybe it's extremely heating, extremely cooling, um, understanding on a microscopic sense what goes on behind metal. Um, that's essentially what is going on within this facility and which our en engineers are able to understand property of materials. So really, really neat. So in that, we are now entering our workshop area. Um, something that's really awesome about GCU is that we have day one access here. So what that means is whether you're an engineer, maybe you're in a Colangelo College of Business, Fine Arts of Production, College of Education, come on down. Um, these workshops are open to you. So day one access. Within the College of Science, Engineering, and Technology, we have over 30 workshops and laboratories that you can work with them. So this is a really neat opportunity just talking about day one access and I want to showcase what this looks like today. So as we enter in we're going to be going through our wood shop area. So over here this is our wood shop. Um, there's a lot to work with in here uh, whether it's a wood lathe, chop saw, band saw, um, table saw, anything like that. Um, really really um, neat opportunity for you to get involved in here. Now within the workshops you get free material. So you don't have to pay for any material. It is free. Um, so come on down if you have the will to learn, to be creative, no prior experience, no prior knowledge needed. Um, if you just want to learn, we have student workers who get paid within this facility. Um, they can actually teach you for free. So yes, they do get paid. It's kind of that trade-off. It's really neat. Uh, but we also have full-time staff down here. Uh, we have our shop managers that are here to assist you in any of this. So we're just in our wood shop. But now we're going to be going into what we call our machine shop. So within this machine shop, there's a lot that's going on in here, um, whether that's um, some resin machines, um, some tables to work on projects, etc. cetera. Um, any of that you can work on in here. So if you just have the will to learn, um, come on down. We will teach you. So you'll see we do have some projects that are currently going on right now. Um, I'm unsure as to what is going on. It looks like they've ripped apart a computer here. Um, so maybe some computer engineers um, in the future, um, in the liking. So in all of that, um, this is just a wonderful facility um, in which our students can work with them. So as we continue heading on this way, we'll go ahead and walk into our sheet metal and fabricating center. So this is our sheet metal fabricating center. Anything you want to bend, cut, warp, hole punch, anything like that, come on down. Um, this is actually really unique. Uh, this is actually an espresso machine. So someone is creating an espresso machine. I'm not sure who at the moment, uh, but again, it's a project that you can work on. So anything, uh, if you just have the will to create, um, kind of like there's a toolbox right in the corner right over here. Um, there's a toolbox right here. Um, if you're wanting to work with sheet metal, anything like that, come on down, we will teach you. Um, over here uh, to our you know, right corner, uh, we have a paint booth, so if you're interested in powder coating, anything like that. Uh, we have a laser engraver, super easy to run. Everyone knows how to utilize it. All you do is upload an image, it'll start laser engraving. Uh, we have a soldering bench in the back and all those wonderful tools that you can utilize within your experience. So as we keep walking, um, this is pretty neat, um, do not tap on the glass, it will scare the engineers, um, but in all of that, um, the machine shop's really unique because if you want to work with metal um, in a way, kind of like the sheet metal fabricating center, but more so when you're actually designing something, you can. So we'll go ahead and walk this way. So in that... I'm going to explain what a CNC machine is. Okay, so computer numerical controlled. Uh, we have CNC machines here. So this machine right here, this is our Haas metal mill. This is a full CNC. So students wanting to create, um, they can. So this is a wonderful display piece, as I like to say. Um, this is actually an oil pan that was created for our Society of Automotive Engineers. Unfortunately, it's a failed oil pan. Uh, the tool did break off, which is my fancy showpiece now. Uh, but in all of that, if you're wanting to work with CNC, maybe it's a half CNC like this machine here, um, or maybe it's a full manual machine like these machines here, you can. Okay, so the premise, again, day one access, you walk in your freshman year onto campus, you can learn. 
Okay, we will teach you, we will equip you with the knowledge that you need to learn all this wonderful equipment, which looks great on a resume, having all those hours underneath your belt. So in that, we are gonna be transitioning into our welding center. So within our welding center here, uh, we have a lot that's going on. Uh, we do offer MIG welding and TIG welding, as well as stick welding, um, if you're interested in any of that. Um, in our back corner, we do have a plasma cutter. Uh, so if you are interested um, in cutting out some sheet metal, uh, maybe some antelope slopes up, um, you can do that as well in here. Uh, something that's really cool is that we have something called coupons. So these coupons, you can walk in here. Uh, we can have a student worker or full-time staff actually teach you how to weld. So again, any expertise, we will take you. Um, intermediate, beginner, expert, Come on down, if you just want to will to learn, we will teach you in that capacity. So in that, we also have a plastic injection mold machine in that center. If you're wanting to create kind of like plastic pieces, uh, kind of like a, a watch band or some glasses, it's also a tool that you can utilize in there as well. So as we go this way, uh, we'll go ahead and, excuse me, uh, we'll go ahead and uh, head on over what we're gonna do is we're gonna be talking to some of our capstone projects. So those seniors who have worked really hard on these projects um, over the course of the entire year. Again, it encapsulates the entire experience, um, four years of the program. Before we do that though, I wanna talk about intellectual property. Here at GCU, we waive all intellectual property rights. So what that means is that you as a student, anything you design, you create, you patent, you copyright, you own 100% of. So if you wanna go pitch a product, um, if you wanna go sell a product, anything like that, you own 100% of that. If you create it on campus, you own it, okay? And you can take that with you. So um, when you're thinking through these capstone projects, keep that in mind, okay? A lot of them are very innovative, and a lot of them are creating solutions to the industry um, of already created devices. So right here, looks like we have our bionic can, is that correct? Yes, sir. Wonderful. Um, so with that, if one of you want to represent and just kind of talk about what is this project? What kind of inspired you about this project? So for this project, we went for prosthetics and making it slim. Um, however, due to budget constraints and time, um, it isn't slim as possible, but we did bring down the cost to 1400 bucks for the hand alone, and that's including the 3D printing and stuff like that. Once we have more time to put more effort into it, once we graduate, hopefully, we can make it slim and make it as a hand and put some EMG sensors so we could give that capability to the people who lost their fingers or hands to move them again. And Absolutely. that's the whole point of our project. Yeah. Absolutely. So what resources, so you mentioned kind of around 1400 ballpark. Um, so what resources were given to you? What did you have to work with for this project? So time? the resources overall, we do have a budget of four, $4,000. Uh, we resources on campus would be the machine shop, the 3D printing labs, the capstone area, and that's what we're used mostly to understand the basics of electronics and the programming that is required to move the fingers itself. And with using the beautiful capstone labs that we do have, we could use the power supplies that were given to us and the multimeters to understand more about the voltage and overall understanding and applying what we learned here throughout the four years so we could have a working hand and show off our little bit of our knowledge. So out of all of this, like what is the future for this? Like today they're here right now working and presenting this at the Capstone Showcase, but where do you hope to see this maybe in a year, maybe in five years? What's kind of the end all be all goal? So for the end all be all goal, hopefully in like five years, it actually looks like in the movies. Um, a real bionic hand and not a little bit larger than normal hand. Um, compact to the point where this one more than anything um, goes for wrist and above prosthetics instead of the whole forearm. If we do go down the path of the forearm we will be getting EMG sensors from the back so it could be more flexible and because we have that much more space <coughs> um, we could compact more electronics into it and make it more as that um, sci-fi video type instead of overall just some motors and a finger. Absolutely, wonderful. Jonathan, thank you so much. Uh, do you all want to introduce yourselves and just kind of just say your names and all that? So as he said, my name is Jonathan. I'm the biomedical and robotics engineer of the project. Uh, my name is Allison and I am the biomedical engineer of the project. 
So, uh, my name is Philip Barkey. I am the electrical engineer for this project. And my name is Daniel Angulo, and I'm the mechanical engineer in this project. Wonderful. Yeah. Thank you, very Thank you much. all so much. Appreciate your time. You. Wonderful. So, we just saw our bionic hand. Um, that's just one of the few projects that we'll run into today. Uh, but in that, you notice that there's a lot of collaboration that was going on in that project, whether it was a mechanical engineer, electrical, biomedical. Um, each one of those students had a passion to create a device uh, that was going, maybe it's for the biomedical industry. Um, but in all of that, they were able to utilize the resources here um, that assisted them in creating the project. Um, so one of our next projects that we're going to be running into, um, before we kind of talk about it, I want to prelude into something called RDP. So here at GCU, we have research and design programs. So for an undergraduate student, you can actually get research underneath your belt. Um, it's really neat. It looks great on a resume. Um, and that is done, um, whether it's through our biomedical device and prototyping labs, we have a wet lab, we have a dry lab, um, where students actually get to interact with biomedical instruments. So in all of that, that's just one of the many RDP opportunities that you have for research here at GCU. Um, so in all that, we'll kind of see that there's a lot of projects. There's a lot that's going on around here. Um, a lot of great projects. We have a solar collector here, electrochemical pressure sensor. Um, there's a lot. Okay. Um, so in all of that, really soaking and taking it in, you kind of see the expertise that's going on here. So we'll go ahead and step on this way. We'll kind of talk about what this robot is. Is this a robot? Yeah, it is, yeah. Wonderful. Well, go ahead and introduce yourselves, uh, who you are, what major you are, and yeah. talk about this wonderful machine here. So, I'm Tyler Lazar. I'm a mechanical engineer here. Uh, I'm Caleb Bry. I'm an electrical engineer working on the software. Hi, I'm Trang Pham, and I'm a biomedical engineer. Hi, I'm Jacob Crittenden. I'm an electrical engineer, and I was working on the hardware electrical side. Absolutely. So in this project, so what kind of inspired you all to create this robot? Yeah, so um, this product actually originated with Benchmark a really long time ago to be more like a service bot to those in like, to those that, what was it? Like healthcare. Yeah, like healthcare, like service bot kind of thing. And it kind of matured into what it is now, into kind of just like a factory autonomous robot. So yeah, it's been a long project. I think we're going on two years now. Absolutely. Getting this thing working, so. Absolutely. So in all of that, um, what resources did you utilize for this project? I mean, it, it looks really compact. So what did you utilize? Were they workshops? Were they uh, the RDP labs? Anything like that? What What's the capacity of what that looked like? Yeah, so from the mechanical side of things, so obviously we're in Labelle Labs, so we use a lot of the tools we have available in Labelle Labs. Also, we have the wonderful shops over in the engineering building, which we use a lot of all that stuff to kind of get the final frame done. I mean, for the, like, yeah. for, like, the, like, the electrical stuff? Yeah, so for the electrical side, we were definitely in, like, the capstone labs in those buildings back there. We were utilizing, like, the benchtop power supplies and oscilloscopes and multimeters to test the system. And that's pretty much what we utilized. Yeah, absolutely. So when you think of this in the scale of, so, benchmark, it is industry. So when you think of this being utilized in industry, what does that look like? a lot with like different things in the industry so we learned like the tolerance for the CAD model and we got a lot of um, helpful advice from them through like the whole process thing so yeah they have been a, a good resource for us yeah absolutely so seeing this project of the work that you've put in um, where do you see this in around maybe a year maybe five ten years like is there a general long scope that you all have for this project or maybe inspiring fellow GCU students to continue working alongside this industry partner yeah I mean so I would love to see this project continue to next year and have another capsule group pick it up because obviously, obviously we've written a lot of documentation to kind of help them if like potentially in the future if they wanted to so I mean from like the mechanical side of things, obviously this is only version one, where like version two would definitely be a lot different with like the whole assembly and things like that and changing some of the things. I mean I guess the Yeah, so I think electrically wise the end goal for benchmark electronics was to make this robot autonomous and be able to move around a warehouse environment. 
um, by itself right. without, a, without a user connected to it with a controller. So I think definitely if it could get picked up in the future and then have another team try to implement a camera system in there and then allow it to move around autonomously, that would be, that would be awesome. Absolutely. Wonderful. Uh, well, thank you all for yeah. your time. Thank you. Uh, great work on your project. And thank you. We'll see you around. Thank yeah, you. Thank Appreciate you. it. All right, so we'll go ahead and take a nice little you all with zoom the in on their wonderful poster here. Um, and that just kind of showcasing the process of what they went through, um, having the description, the justification, the standards that they have to go through, kind of their final assembly. Um, you can even see their CAD design. Um, so the CAD design is crucial, um, especially within engineering, just understanding, you know, working things through a computer, through software, um, a really neat opportunity um, that they took advantage of. So, wonderful job by them. So we'll continue walking. Uh, we do have a couple more projects uh, that we will highlight here. Um, but in all of that, in that you'll see that we have um, a lot of groups. Uh, there's a lot going on. Um, so overall, um, hopefully, this has been an enjoyable experience. Uh, we are kind of getting towards that tail end. Um, that's more than OK. Um, Looking at all this, the direct control is that, doesn't. Is that part of one? Direct control. We'll go ahead and head on this way. Oh, excuse us. Sorry about that. No, that's cool. Yeah, <laughs> A greeninator. I love it. right over there um, but in that we are coming up on a project um, this is a really neat project over here um, it's actually a kind of a crane system so I'll pick up some beehives really neat really neat opportunity so this is a uh, apiary field workstation um, that these students have been working on um, just seeing how monstrous uh, of a machine that is. It's really neat. Get curious and swim up to it. I'll be honest, I've had that effect on pigeons. That's exactly the thing. We based a lot of our public performance on what they were telling us. We're out there at least five hours. The battery should last at least five hours at a time. It probably has to spread. I'm sure that can be a thing, but getting Gisher's attention. So in that, we are coming up on a wonderful um, project here. Um, this project here looks to be an assistive utensil. Um, so in that, um, we'll try to see if we can spare some of their time here. Hello. Hi. Would you all like to talk about your project that you have? Definitely. Awesome. Um, so in that, um, would you all introduce yourself, what your name is, what you're studying, and what project you are representing today? Yeah, so I'm Brianna Van Meter and I'm a mechanical engineering student. I'm Kiana Tacius, I'm a biomedical engineering student. I'm Samantha Cicados and I'm general engineering. I'm Olivia Zamora and I'm also biomedical engineering. Um, and our capstone project for the year was the assistive utensil. Um, our ultimate goal was to help mitigate the hand tremors of patients with neurodegenerative diseases such as Parkinson's disease so that they can complete a meal without their hand tremor getting in the way of um, completing meals. We have a design for an ergonomic handle that's able to fit with different types of hand grips for utensils and also different hand sizes. Um, and then right here we have our electromechanical system that can correct for unwanted tremor movement, which Bree and Sam can talk a little bit about how that works. Um, yeah, we just decided to use um, an Arduino board and we uh, did Arduino software for it and it contains an uh, MPU uh, 6050 along with two motors to correct two axes. And yeah, we were able to do some testing, get it down to about 55%. 
Um, but yeah, there's definitely progress that could be made, but it was a fun project. <laughs> Absolutely. So when you see this project uh, going into industry, uh, maybe it's one, five, ten years down the line, what does it look like? Like, where do you hope for this project to be one day? It'd be awesome if we could, if this project did make it to the market, because we were able to build it with a major cost reduction. Uh, if we were buying products, or all the components in bulk and stuff, we were able to produce it for like $18 with 3D printing and then bulk, uh, bulk pricing, price components. Um, the things out there right now range from like two hundred to seven thousand dollars for assisted utensils, and these aren't covered by insurances. So it'd be really awesome if we could get something like this that's a little cheaper to produce out to patients and uh, caregivers. Absolutely, wonderful. Any any other last thoughts here? Uh, no, I don't think so. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, all right, thank you <laughs> thank all. You. We appreciate it. Yes. Wonderful. So really neat device. Um, Kind of that biomedical, we, we heard more, a lot of biomedical here. Really neat, uh, just to kind of see those devices at play. Um, so lastly here, uh, we're gonna go back into the main entrance of our engineering building, and we're gonna touch base on our last project. I'm not gonna give it away, um, but I'm gonna have them kind of explain what this project entails, who it's assisting, um, why they built the device. Um, really, really neat, so stay tuned. Hello. We are. That's okay. We're gonna wait like two seconds. Yeah, absolutely. So we're gonna wait a couple seconds. Um, but in that, is that right? Yes. Um, you wanna introduce yourself and what major you are? Yeah, just introduce yourself awesome. and what major you are. Yeah, for sure. Hey guys, I'm Zach Heater. Um, I'm an electrical engineer, and my team we worked. Do you want me to explain the project? Yeah, right? go ahead. Please. Awesome. So our project we designed an inspection system for a cartridge conveyance. And so essentially what our, this is the project, and it's actually inside there running right now, but it's being explained to some people. But basically what's happening is uh, Red Mountain Arsenal, which is the company we work with, they are run out of New Mexico, and they are a small, they are a ammunition manufacturer. And so what they do is they have a conveyance system that will just like construct the cartridges, and that'll run into our conveyance system, which starts right here. And this is our cartridge conveyance, our, cartridge adapter which will orientate each bullet in the same manner and so that once it gets dropped into our system every bullet is positioned exactly the same and as it runs through our system it'll run through a couple of um, fields and so first it'll run through a imaging system and we're working with a company called Keons to design and to um, construct an imaging system that is coded to reject any faulty cartridges and so faulty cartridges and to you know anything with blemishes defects like that and if it is spotted to be um, defected then it'll run through our pneumatic valve which outputs a air like uh, some, some compressed air and that'll reject the bullet to the rejection side so on the left will be our good cartridges and on the right will be our rejected cartridges and that'll go into two separate bins and so in a minute you can go in there and actually see the machine working but that's basically the premises the premise of our machine is to take cartridges from theirs orientate them in a certain way run them through an imaging system reject the bad ones and separate them and so that's basically the premise of our machine and I could ask Lupe if he's willing to show it to you guys absolutely sounds good so really neat opportunity. Um, so in that, so you teamed with Red Mountain Arsenal, mm -hmm. right? So what's the overall scope of this? Is this going into industry? Is that kind of yes. the vision here? So or? once our project is finished, you can see it's actually still on the pilot and that it came with. And so once we finish, pretty much within the week, I think, uh, RMA is actually shipping this out to their, to their manufacturing um, warehouse. And it'll be basically implemented straight into their system right away. Uh, they still have to add in the imaging system, obviously, and they might have to um, do a quick, a couple um, tweaks to make sure that it fits in with their system. Um, our system currently is operating at 140 rounds per minute, and they want it to work within 60 to 120. So we have a VFD, which is a variable frequency, um, and that basically operates how fast our rollers are moving. And so what we are attempting to figure out with RMA is how can we match the rate of their system. So once it's implemented into their design, into their system, they'll be able to like kind of tweak it to like match their rate and their speed that they need. But yeah, it'll be sent out within the next week or two. 
uh, directly to their command system, and they're implementing it as soon as they get it. So, wow. Amazing. Yeah. So what's been what's been one of your largest struggles on this project? Like, what's been a hurdle that you all had to overcome, um, whether that's physically with the project, maybe just like through an algorithm or anything like that? What does that look like? The biggest struggle we had for our project was definitely the cartridge adapter. Yeah. So if you look down here, this is a disc or a plate that is within the cartridge adapter. And um, if you look closely, there's some valleys and there's also some like uh, thin blocks. And so the hard part was because we want each and every cartridge to be oriented the same way. And so Felipe actually worked very a lot, a lot of hours on this cartridge adapter to make sure that it would do that. And so the hard part was you had to make sure that the bullets were kicked up and like positioned correctly onto here. Are you ready for it? Yeah, awesome. To make sure that each one. So this was definitely our. We can show you how it works inside there. Well, Absolutely. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you, Zach. So we'll go ahead and follow Felipe in here. And in that, um, we'll go ahead and have the rest Hi of guys the team. guys, welcome so. here. We have Florin, our electro engineer. I'm Florin, electrical. Roxana, our second electro, uh, sorry, mechanical. mechanical engineer. Zach is the other electrical. And me, mechanical engineer as well, of course, Felipe. And this is our uh, cartridge adapter conversion system. And as Zach was saying, this was our biggest challenge, which makes sure that the cartridges are oriented in the same position every time. So that when they slide down, the cameras are able to check and they're in the same orientation every time. I'm gonna turn this on so you guys get a quick demonstration here. So we should have it just coming down and it just sits on the proper orientation every time. And if we get a defective cartridges, the rejection system over there should uh, reject it. So then whatever is on that side, it's you know rejected. Whatever is on this side is the good cartridges and once they come off the line, uh, RMA, which is the company that sponsors the sponsors, should be able to sell the good cartridges, of course, and recheck the bad ones to see to make sure that they are indeed effective or not. Um, so what's been so seeing this project one, five, ten years down the line? I know Zachary uh, talked about kind of having Red Mountain actually have this and test this. So. Overall, what is what is your vision here to get this out in the industry and actually see it be successful? Number one vision actually to make a functional machine that's very affordable. A mm -hmm. uh, similar machine that does all the stuff that we design here. It's, it's easily $30,000 and up. Yeah. And we were actually able to work with our $4,000 budget allocated for the capstone and come up with a prototype and make it work and meet the client's uh, requests and requirements. Absolutely. So. Utilizing these facilities, uh, what was was there like a main shop that you were primarily in all the time, or like what was the how eclectic were you in utilizing all the facilities? I think Felipe can answer this one. <laughs> Spent way way too much time in, in the in the shop to see the facilities. The main shop that we use is the actual shop right. where John and Daryl helped us to uh, do all the mechanical portions of it, all the actual physical assemblage and you know construction. But we also spend a lot of time at the three D printer. Uh, shops that we have because the cartridges and the funnel over here everything was printed over there and we had to print easily 20 of those to get the right one and this is the final product that we have with the proper fin orientation the proper uh, material which is onyx it's carbon fiber and, and nylon which is more resistance softer on the metal which are the cartridges and Compared to actual metal that you're gonna use, if you have to machine this part in you know, aluminum or whatever metal you're gonna use, this is just a percentage of the cost. So absolutely, really, really, really good. absolutely, and, and faster too. Absolutely, wonderful. Well, thank you all for your time and kind of showcasing this. Uh, anything else that you want to mention about this project or anything? We had else? Uh, on the electrical part. Uh, one of the requirements was to be operational on 120 volts. Okay. We had the motor runs on 233 phase, okay. so we have to come up with a variable frequency drive to take 120 and boost it up to 230 and actually uh, rectify a single phase of three phase. And with this in mind, we have the ability to uh, change the frequency. Absolutely. Which in uh, turns we can control the rotations and help us out to match the rotations and uh, uh, to match up the rotation with the existing uh, assembly line of the client. Yeah. 
So I know one of the one of the big challenges here was kind of that that sorting device that you pointed out. Um, but what about the electrical side? Were, were there some hurdles that you all ran into there? Uh, power was the main one, which we were able to uh, come up with a solution. And also, uh, we provided power for the imaging system, which uh, it's been designed by a third party, and it's going to be a plug and play for our system. Absolutely. Wonderful. Yeah, I mean, you know, another requirement was the emergency stop right here. That once you press, it stops the machine, so it's safe for you know everybody around operating the machine and device. Absolutely. But the wiring of this part, as Flo well understands, was kind of tricky because we don't want to stop the imaging system and the computers that are running. We just want to stop the mechanical side of it, so just the rollers and the cartridge adapter. So we have to run a couple so of wires. So this in mind, system. the top portion is actually switched, yet the bottom portion is live wire. Absolutely. Wonderful. Well, fantastic job to thank all you. of you uh, that worked on this project. Um, and thank you for allowing us just to take some thank time for stopping by your brain. Yeah, appreciate it. Sure. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you all. Good See you guys. Good See you. All right, we're going to pop on out this way. Oh, yeah. I don't have anything else working. All right, so in all of that, um, I hope you all enjoyed kind of our capstone showcase. There's a lot of projects out there, um, but in that, hopefully, that just kind of paints the picture um, of what it's like to be an engineer, kind of pursue, hey, this is your senior year. After your four years in the program, um, you actually have to showcase your project. And so um, here we have a lot of people here, whether it's our deans, our directives, our college leadership. Uh, we also have industry partners that are showcasing and walking through this facility, talking to all of these individuals and all the amazing work that they did. Um, so in all of that, that is our show today. Um, hopefully you all enjoyed um, kind of walking through um, with me and um, hearing uh, these testimonies from all of these students. Um, if you do have any further questions about GCU, um, please uh, reach out, gcu.edu, um, throw in an application there. Uh, we'd be more than happy uh, to talk about engineering, anything GCU related with you here. So thank you again uh, for listening, tuning in, and hope you have a wonderful day. Lopes up.